Bom dia, everybody. We are in Portugal. Good morning, everyone. So, it's the day that I leave to Portugal. And I'm currently doing a little journaling on my roof patio area. Um, like I normally do. I just feel like whenever I don't do this, my day is absolutely shit. So anyways, I just finished journaling and let me just tell you, this morning was kind of stressful because I basically didn't ask to bring a surfboard. I'm going to a surf camp, by the way, if you can't tell from the title. I didn't ask them if I should bring my surfboard because normally I don't, but I guess since I'm progressing and getting better, they were like, yeah, actually bring your surfboard. I'm like, bro, I don't have a surfboard bag. I don't have the insulation to keep it safe. How the fuck do you fly with a surfboard? I was kind of getting stressed, but I actually found a local surf rental place that has boards and they literally have my exact board that I have right now. So I'm just gonna do that. It's gonna be like 200 euros, but I was looking up how much it would cost to fly with a surfboard and it would be like $500. I had to pick my battles and I decided not to go with that battle. Hello, this is Editing Jade. I just want to say that this video series idea, Surfer Girl Diaries, is actually from my friend Sav Tuma's YouTube videos, which I love, and I just want to give her credit, where credit is due, because I think it's a really cute title. So go check out her vlogs, because she also does surfer vibe videos. And yeah, love it. Okay, back to the video. This is going to sound really basic of me, but one thing I'm obsessed with lately has been eating bread and butter for breakfast. You're going to be like, bro, what? <laughs> That's like kind of obvious, why is it fucking up? I don't know why it took me like 22 and a half years to learn that bread and butter is literally the most elite breakfast combo. Um, I do it in a way that my boyfriend's family does it, which is add butter, cinnamon, and sugar. A little bit of ground cinnamon and just go <laughs> Then I go with brown sugar. If you do everything I say right, it should look like this. Okay, so I have a bunch of small little errands to do before my flight. I fly out at 6.30 p.m. It's currently 10 a.m. So we're chilling. I'm actually on the phone right now with some customer service guy at Bank of America because I want to close down one of my accounts. I essentially have like a bunch of cards, credit cards, bank accounts that I don't use. And I just don't like that because I feel like I could be using my money towards better accounts and cards. So no one gives, no one probably gives a fuck. But if you're into personal finance... Um, you might find this interesting. So, um, I'm actually gonna answer some questions while I'm on the phone with this Bank of America guy because um, I'm on hold. What's your advice from someone who wants to move to Cali and learn to surf? This is a really good question because I feel like California is probably the easiest place to learn to surf, but also the hardest. It's the easiest place to learn because the waves aren't scary. It's not like Portugal where we're going, where even a three foot, four foot wave can feel like you're dying. I feel like the waves here are really nice. Um, honestly, like if you go into the right area, it can be really soft, but it's a hard place to learn because of crowds. Like the, the places where you wanna learn are way too crowded, I feel like. So my best advice is to find someone to teach you your first three or four times because just going out there alone will not work. Someone else asks, I recently just became a fan. Hello. Where do you usually surf in LA? So I like to surf where it's not crowded. So if you are curious, I will be at Manhattan Beach, El Porto, Huntington Beach, or Regatta Beach. Those are my normal spots. I know there's like five different places I just listed, but that's just because I go wherever the waves are good. Someone asked, um, how has your mental health been since your last trip? Wow, that's a really good question. I feel like my mental health has been going up and down for the past six months. If you guys don't know, I talk a lot about my issues with like finding self-worth and numbers and money. And like if my bank account goes below a certain amount, I freak the fuck out. So I had a lot of that. Like I just am, I'm a control freak when it comes to finances. Like I need to know what everything is, what <laughs> I need to know everything. But obviously that's not how life works. And I think towards the end of last year, I was getting really desperate because the brand deals I did close uh, all like did not work out. Like a lot of them canceled on me. I always have money to pay for my bills and cover a roof over my head, but I, I just, I'm just, uh, I have Asian trauma. So I need to have a certain amount or else I freak out. But actually through that experience of, of having honestly like an ego death, like knowing that I'm okay, even if I don't have everything figured out, it made me really appreciative of what I do have. So I would say for the most part, my mental health has been better. Like in the terms of right now, it was really bad like a few months ago, but that's okay. We learn and we recover. I would say lately though, the thing that has been giving me the most stress has been my health. I live a very healthy lifestyle. Like I like to eat, 
good food, I like to surf, but I have something I can't control, which is my thyroid, which I have a goiter or like a thyroid that's kind of overgrown and it's not cancerous, but um, it's just kind of scary because it's benign, but every six months we check up on it. I think the reason why last year I was so timid with setting up appointments and stuff was because I just didn't want to know. Like I almost liked being oblivious, which is not good, okay? So this is a reminder, if you're someone who has health anxiety, which I know a lot of us have, set up your goddamn appointments because it is better to be proactive than to just sit there and wait. I'm still on the phone with these goddamn Bank of America. So I already told you guys that I'm renting this surfboard in Portugal. It's literally the same like make of my current board, but I am bringing my own surf stuff and I wanna show everything that I bring with you guys because these are like my essentials. If I don't bring this, something's gonna go down. So let's do a what's in my surf bag. First thing I have are earplugs. I don't only have one pair, but two pairs because I always lose them, unfortunately. If the waves are big, I can lose them. So usually I wear this when it's super windy. Basically the wind can really push a lot of sand into your ear canal and cause infections. So I'm bringing two pairs. Also, if you're curious, I'll link below where I get these because on Amazon, they're usually 60 bucks, but you can get them on AliExpress for like five. Then I have a leave-in conditioner and a hairbrush. Next I have, oh, this is really cool, swimwear deodorant. Basically, you know when you swim and like your bathing suit or wetsuit smells like absolute dog shit? Well, <laughs> this is amazing because you can just spray it and it kind of cancels out the odor. For sunscreen, I have quite the options. So I have liquid, regular, and I have stick. Let me explain each one. So. <laughs> Vertra. This is my favorite surf sunscreen ever. I just really like it because look at the first shade. It's like my shade. Second of all, it does not come off. Surfing for two hours, it does not fall off, but I don't like it for my body, obviously, because of the stick. This is what I use for my hands or feet. This is like $9 on Amazon, and it's hypoallergenic. Now, this, I don't know where the fuck to find it. It's from Avene. My friend in Portugal actually gave this to me. It's, I think, a better version of this. This is just expensive, I think. And lastly, I have an SPF chapstick just on my lips. Um, and last but not least, I'm gonna actually bring some wax. I'm gonna bring three bars of wax. I'm gonna bring some base coats so I can re-wax a board. I'm gonna bring these two top coats. I really like the Sticky Bumps brand. If you guys watch my YouTube shorts, you know I like to wax surfboards, so I'm also gonna bring my Hey Dandy wax scraper. Ah, there we go. I'm feeling kind of spunky and I wanna work out before I fly. That was one of the most efficient nine minute workouts I've ever done. Oh my God, I'm like shaking still. Um, you guys saw in the footage, it was really hard surprisingly. It started raining so I couldn't go up to my upstairs gym so I just went into my living room. Holy shit. I just made it past airport security and now I'm going to the Amex lounge, <laughs> my favorite. I actually haven't been to this one before so. We'll see. I have like an hour and a half before my flight. So I'm gonna eat because it's 4 p.m. and I love free food. All right, I just made it to the Amex Lounge. The bathrooms here are so sick. I'm gonna find a spot to chill in and then we're gonna go get some food. Oh, also this is my airport fit. I don't know if you can tell, but I am always wearing green. <laughs> and my phone case is even green. Just finished some dinner. I'm gonna have a little bit of this liquid IV. You guys know what this is? It's basically like an electrolyte. I don't know why I haven't done this before, but like on the fly, I get so thirsty, but I don't wanna drink water because if I drink more water, I have to pee more. So this is a little hack so you can be hydrated before and during. So my flight boards at 6 p.m. It's currently 5.30. Because this is an 11 hour overnight flight, I'm gonna take so much melatonin you don't even know to fall asleep. Actually, I don't want to watch movies. Like, I just want to sleep. <laughs> I want to never feel anything. I just want to wake up in the city. So 11 hour flight from LA to Paris and then a two hour layover. And then we're gonna go from Paris to Lisbon, Portugal. <gasps> Bom dia, everybody. We are in Portugal. You guys probably wondering what the fuck is my background right now. So last night I went straight from the airport to this hostel. <laughs> I'm basically staying in a hostel for five nights because Lisbon Surf Hostel and Camp invited me here to make some content. But I'm the only one in this room. This is my little bed 
we have a little shelf with a light. And then I have my own bathroom, by the way, because one thing I can't do is share a bathroom. I'm sorry. I am bougie. Okay, call me bougie, but I cannot share a bathroom. I'm really excited to be here. The only problem is... There are no waves here. So essentially, I'm in Carva Kaloche. I'm gonna butcher a speech so bad. But somehow, this southern coast has been getting a really bad storm. So there's no waves today. <laughs> and I'm really sad, but also relieved because I'm so fucking tired. Like, my body does not know what time it is. Long story short, I want to make the most of it. Because usually, when things don't go my way, I kind of start to get anxious and I freak out. But like, I'm in Portugal right now. So we're gonna make a whole day out of it, even though we can't surf today. We're gonna do something fun. It's currently 7 a.m. I decided the first thing I wanna do is go to a little cute cafe. The earliest cafe opens at 8 a.m. So we're gonna read for like 40 minutes and chill. So it's 9 30 now. I just finished journaling and having some coffee I feel a little bit better now that I put my words on paper just because initially this morning I was feeling a little bit sad. I thought I was wasting my time um, And I know that's not how I should feel I should be grateful to just be in Portugal, but like I just really struggle I think what it is if I'm honest is like I struggle with like being productive It's probably again Asian trauma, but like I just feel like I have to be productive at all times and if I'm not surfing or making content I don't have like I'm not doing my purpose. I just need to be grateful. Like I'm in Portugal. So I'm just gonna try my best. I'm obviously still a little anxious, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna go to the grocery store to get some snacks because um, that might cheer me up. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking to get some soup because I'm not feeling the best. Like I feel like I'm just really cold and like I might be just run down a little bit from the flight. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna just get this. What is this? All in. Portuguese. Eh, this should be good. Tell me why there's just like fish in the middle of the aisle. It's very Portuguese. Wow, this is pretty cool. <gasps> this is the whole candy aisle. Wow. Look at these. Okay, guys, we were taking a turn of events. I am getting picked up by this guy who is renting my board. Um, we're gonna go on an adventure. How are you? Hi! No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not this. So I was surfing in the morning. How was it? It's a wave that when it works, I mean, when it, it works, it's like I don't go to work. Oh. <laughs> but it was not that good today because oh, it's a windy swell. It's really good with south swell, with west swell. Not that good with northeast swell. Okay. But surf the outside. What do you have to do? You see that stairs there? Yeah, you go down. You go down. Edge. And then the current will take you to the middle, then you go through. So this is called São Pedro de Estoril. You got two main points. This one here. Okay. It's called Pico. Mm -hmm. And this is Bafurada. Okay, so uh, I was Portuguese surf champion before the internet, so no one knows me. <laughs> and then I start to see that people want to rent boards, and I create service from surface to surface. Hey, so I'm renting um, a Machado 510 board. Five which is, is it 59? Yay, that's even better. Right, so if you guys are ever in Lisbon, or Aracera, or wherever, go check out Portugal Surf Rentals. The set comes yeah. right here. Oh, okay. Got okay, it? got it. Is it slippery? A little bit. Okay. All right, guys. So it is 5 p.m. I'm literally sitting in a car. It's because I rented a car. Basically, you guys know I was feeling a little sad that there was no waves and I want to make the most out of this trip. So I decided to pull the trigger. I just got a rental car for two days. So that means I can go anywhere. Look, I'm at the beach right now just because I wanted to see the waves. No, they're absolutely shit. But yeah. It's kind of fun. Honestly, driving here, I've driven here before and it's a little bit scary. I actually probably ran one stoplight already and it's been 15 minutes of me having the car. I just can't tell. Whoa, the wind is really strong right now. I honestly just can't tell when there is stoplights. Like, it's not clear. I swear to God, like in America, like I see it flashing or like you see green to yellow to red. Here, it's just red. Maybe I'm just tripping. Also, the wind is very strong right now. Maybe I should like go home. That tree's blown. 
Oh my god, look at that pole is shaking. Um Okay, we should just go back home now, huh? Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode.